Okay, this is now with the girl. I think this is his girl. Ex-prostitute interview, Martina. Hair look beautiful though. Your hair looks beautiful. Okay. Does my hair look beautiful though? Your hair looks it does. beautiful. Look, she looks okay. great. Yeah. I like her. My titties look right. Yes. <laughs> Everything looks right. Mark, tell me, Mark. <laughs> No, you, you think you, I can knock a boy off right now? I know you can. I'm like a geisha girl. Like, I just like to see if I could do it still. You know, and I'd be like, I still got it. You still got it, baby. I still got it. All right, Martina. Yes. Martina, where'd you grow up? Where are you from originally? I'm from Sacramento, California. And, um, you know, Northern California, you know, raised in Sacramento. You know, met Kenny Red. He's a Bay Area cat, so that brought me to the Bay Area. You know, that's where I got a lot of my money from, San Francisco. You know, all up and down the coast of California. You know, I got money all over the world, but you know, just starting in the game. Yo, yo, yo! I did not say that. The Morning Star said you said a man abusing women as normal is actually the opposite. Three percent of men abuse women. Other men protect and die for women. Okay, first of all. I know a bubble you're in because only certain bubbles use that particular sentence structure. So that's interesting. And two, um, I didn't say that. So if you're talking to me, I did not say that. I said, wait, it was it was a different context. It wasn't that context. It wasn't men in general. I said men who abuse women have usually men who protect other men about abusing the women. That is common because that's just like how – you, that makes sense though in your bubble like it just makes sense that you're all doing it so like you would all protect each other when you do it um okay so this is the girl one all up and down the coast of california all right and yeah. uh, tell me about your family you had both your parents when is you were young okay? yes i had both of my parents when i was young and um but my father my, my mom and father split up but my mom worked like three jobs but i had two other brothers that were pimps so I was like exposed to the game, to the ism at a young age, you know. And um, I learned how to speak ism, you know, real early in the game. And, um, you know, I always knew to break on a boy, like don't ever let a boy kiss you or have sex with you. If you get money from them, they won't tell nobody, you know. But it sounds crazy, but you know, when you're young and you're absorbing all kind of game from your big brothers telling their girls, you know what I'm saying, their hoes, you know, certain things, you know, I'm getting all the game, I'm absorbing it all, so, yeah, so, yeah, I always, and it's not, it's not, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's in me, not on me, you know. So, what age did you start doing this kind of work? Well, I think I was in the seventh grade is the first time I gave a boy a kiss for $50, but, you know, I was 20 years old when I started you know, getting down, getting down. But I've always been the type, like, a little gold digger when I was a young girl, like, always wanted every. Okay. So I am much more accepting to bubbles that own what bubble they're in. See how she said gold digger? She's literally, she knows what she's going for. She knows what she's in the game for. She knows how to beat the game. When Fresh and Fit say, like, all these women are gold diggers, nope, just some of them. Right? Because it's a bubble and it's fine. I have no problem with gold digging culture. I have no problem with old men who want to pay young hot girls money. I have no problem with any of these things. As long as you don't fucking try to sell it, like you're not doing what you're doing. That's when I start to get annoyed. Like, oh no, my version of love is like the best version because it's the most wholesome. No, your version of love is the version you have. It's specific and it's about business and money. And that's fine. And maybe love's not even in it. But I know a lot of people who just get this like hard on for romanticizing like a lot of sex work but sex work is hard and it's a toll and you do become like jaded because it's difficult not to when you're dealing with a lot of really grumpy customers I mean do people like Mark comes home stressed from Starbucks all the time because the customers are mean and cussing at him you think women who sell their bodies aren't gonna have fucking stories and start to like resent men so like again no now I, I think I told you guys when I was making a decision in my um few years ago in my 20s about like what kind of a full-time content creator did I want to be? Did I want to go down the bubble of like sex work and cosplaying? Or did I want to go down the bubble of philosophy and YouTube politics and like YouTube uh, content, this stuff? And I decided that based off of like what kind of a daily lifestyle and energy I wanted around me, I didn't want a sex worker's audience 24-7. I didn't want that energy of people always like, there's a different energy. My, my audience is amazing, even with the sex work stuff, but I just do it part-time. 
full time I do this stuff because I prefer having this kind of energy thrown at my way. I'd rather hear criticisms every day about my thought process than criticisms every day about how I like about how my body is. So I had to make the decision to decide what I was going to be. I also don't view myself as hot shit. So like I think I'm pretty. I think I'm cute looking. I think I've got a great body. I think I think I think. But I don't actually think I'm literally like hot shit enough to sell the like sex worker concept very hard. I think a lot of girls, even if they don't like, even if they have insecurities, which we all do, I think it is a very different kind of person who can just get up here and be like, yep, this is who I am. That's awesome. I don't have that. I think I'm too insecure probably. But I also, um, I like to be happy every day to the best of my ability. And I couldn't do that if I had to be sexy every day. Like, I literally haven't posted on OnlyFans in, like, two weeks because I just, like, I've been feeling so ugly and so sick and I just, like, not pretty. So I couldn't be good at my job if my job was to be pretty. Thank God my job is just to think. <laughs> it's much easier thinking <laughs> than being pretty. Anything, or if you didn't have anything for me, I didn't want to talk to you. So money, money's an important part it of the equation. Money, money is a very important part of my life. Like, What's more important, money or love? Um... Sock it to a bitch pocket. Fuck love. I'm married to the game. First, so, first. So, so you've had... Uh... Married to the game. Exactly. I am married to love. I'm a romantic. I want to get married. I want to be held every night while I like cry in the arms of my partner slash we watch anime slash he fucks me from behind, you know? I want to be with somebody that I have babies with and that I'm a grandma one day and I'm old. And like I'm married to the idea of like falling in love. They're married to the idea of making money. I think I can make money and be in love. So I'm going for the best of both worlds. But that's because I value falling in love. I value being in a monogamous relationship. I value being in a committed relationship more than a monogamous one, but like a committed one. So again, no problem here. I like her. She is 100% owning her shit. She's not trying to fluff it. She's not trying to pretend she's like a good girl from next door. She is full on saying, nah, nah, I'm here to fucking win this game. And I fucking respect this. I respect this woman. You've had pimps along the way? Yeah, um, Kenny Red. Um, I was with Kenny Red for years, and um, he got me from this uh, this older guy. You know, God bless him. He passed away, and um, I was young, and um, yeah. Then I got with Kenny Red pimping, and he had like a lot of holes. He, you know, he was like exciting. He was fun. He was just. He was raw, he was sharp, you know. He was no nonsense. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I got with him, you know. But what, what is the attraction for a girl to go with a pimp? I mean, you're giving... Uh, Morningstar says, Fresh and Fit te says, technically all women are gold diggers because no woman is going to date a man with no job long term, but a man will take, well, man will and take care of women long term. I mean, I don't care if my husband works. I make enough money for both of us, so... Like, it'd be nice, but, like, if it comes down to paying for childcare or paying for a stay-at-home husband, I'd rather have a stay-at-home dad, obviously. Giving him all your money, right? Well, the reason why I did, because he had all kind of stuff. He had, you know, a lot of things. It wasn't like I was getting it out the dirt with him. When I got with Kenny, Kenny had everything, you know. He had hoes, you know what I'm saying? He had thieves. He had cars. He, he was just, you know... He just had everything, you know, and, and I was just excited by it. And I wanted to be a part of his organization. Mm -hmm. And what did you get out of the equation? When did I get out? What, what, what did you get out of the, the relationship? What did I get out of it? Um, I got a lot of stuff out of it. Miss Alyssa says, but deep down, does the idea all humans want to love and be loved still apply? It's just their bubble that it alters the lens through which they see their lives is changed. I think she does love... I think she has love for herself. So I would say that everyone does want to love and be loved. And I don't know by the end of this video if I'm going to have different ideas. But so far, I think that is always true, right? But I think that she, her version of like what love is for her works for her brain. So again, I think because we're like evolved animals over time, we don't know how we're going to evolve or have relationships with our brain or our, our free will or our consciousness. So it, it, it's always possible that someone somewhere can have love this particular way. And so I'm open to that. It might not be true for all people. Like sometimes you see those girls who are like, I never needed a man, I don't even want a man, I'm good single, but you know they're like so desperate to be in love. 
I tried really hard because I went through that stage. After my, like, big breakup or whatever, I went through a stage of, like, I don't even fucking need this shit. Like, I'm so resentful and, like, bitter, but I'm going to pretend like I'm a girl boss. And then, actually, I accepted that, like, oh, yeah, I actually really do want a partner, but I accept that I don't need one, and that's really freeing and awesome. But I really, really want one. I want one so much that if I have one, it's worse to not have one, if that makes sense. But when I don't have one, I'm just like, oh, yeah, like, I haven't found a consenting partner who wants to marry me or be with me. So consent matters more than anything. So I can, like, move my feelings aside. Right? Um, but I'm, I am seeing a version of love come from her. But let's see where it's coming from. You know what I mean? Um, it might just be the love for the game, love for money, love for her status, love for her being successful. Most of all, I got some game up out of it and um, a lot of intelligence from it. You know, I learned a lot. You know, if it's not a blessing, it's a lesson. And um, shit, my pussy made me a better bitch. Which <laughs> it made me a better person. You know, some bitches out here fucking for free and doing all kind of stuff. I can go to sleep real good knowing that I got paid for my pussy and I use protection on top of that, you know? <laughs> go queen let's go protection queen y'all out here spreading stis protection queen protection queen okay this is so interesting because like different bubbles different things i know tons of people who like don't get tested they don't even ask about birth control they're not even concerned and that's their bubble fuck that i love it it's their bubble i could never the anxiety i would have i'm like an extra negotiator i'm like what contraceptives do you need like i literally always like i am like, I'm the kind of person who brings, like, five kinds. Like, what do we need? What can we have? What do, do, we, do we need? You know, just in case. Just fucking in case. You know? So she is a standard she set for herself. She takes pride in being pro-protection, being pride paying for her pussy. Some women in some bubbles, they're just happy to have, like, to get laid. Right? They're just, like, happy to get laid. Because they're like, a man approved of me. I've been chosen. A man is into me. I've been, you know, fucked. That's all great. All people have different variations of what their goal is and why they do what they do. Obviously for her, I think she grew up in a bubble that like clearly the happiest you can be is like money wise. So you have to secure the bag. And I think that's fair. I think that's most people, right? Like most people. But then you'll meet like really like impoverished people who are really lovely and joyful and so like it's not always about money to every bubble but for her obviously she really like that you know what I mean so I'm all I'm all about this energy for this bubble but again I okay let's see what she says let's see what she says so you, you've had uh run-ins with the law right? I had run-ins with the law and I know how to swindle my way out of it and sometimes I can't. And when I can't, you know what I'm saying? Kenny never left. No, no, no. Big D says, why is she a queen and the pimp is the bad guy? Aren't they in the same game? <sighs> the pimp? Okay. I don't respect the pimp as much because the pimp isn't fucking. She's fucking people. So I kind of respect that she's in the game. I would prefer her to be independent versus giving her money to a pimp. But if she needs the pimp to have good business connections to get customers... I understand that. And then the pimp gets paid a fee, which is fine. I think the way that the original pimp talked about this stuff is actually the favored pimp version of versus the gorilla pimping, right? So I think we've established that like all these forms of intimacy work together for a particular reason, mostly because they complement one another. So if the pimp we watched before this um, is genuinely being kind to his women and he's not hitting them or raping them, then this is just a business transaction where he gets 100% of the commission and then he gives it back to the girls how he sees fit. Versus, like, the way she is talking, she is good. Like, it is it is the, exactly. It's the two sides of the same coin. Um, from Dono, yes, exactly. So it is, like, the two sides of the same coin. Um, so, yeah, oh, the aliens just said it. She's doing the work, but the pimp is taking the credit. So I kind of like dislike the pimp for that, but I also know that some people feel like because the pimp offers all the emotional support, um, is like getting their customers, is organizing their clothes, doing all their appointments, stuff like that, that is him earning his money. But then I would want the pimps to own the fact that the girls and them are equal. But because of the language, it automatically insinuates that the, the women are less, just like an employee and a boss. But without the employees, the boss wouldn't thrive. But without the boss, the employees wouldn't have structure. This is the conundrum between, like, all of the arguments in relation to, like, work-labor forces, right? Is 
we are the labor. We are the ones doing your labor, but we're getting paid the least, even though without us, you wouldn't even have a business. But then without the bosses to create the business, the business, there wouldn't be jobs for employees to apply for. Oh my God. So all of this makes sense within the bubble, right? So this is why I say like, you can bubble hop. If you don't fuck with this energy, bubble hop. You know what I mean? Like be in a different bubble where it works differently. But, you know, not every bubble sees money the same. $10 in one bubble is not the same as $10 in another bubble, right? Does that make sense? So I'm okay with the other pimp guy if he doesn't rape or hit women. And I'm okay with her um, doing her business, right? Me in jail, he's coming to get me. He's coming to get in all his hoes. You know what I'm saying? He ain't never left a bitch in jail, ever. And do you have children of your own? Yes, I do have a daughter. I'm 55 right now. I'm 50 fine. I have a daughter that's 38 years old. She um, is a, a college graduate. She has her degrees and everything. Can you raise her? I raised her, and her father did, and he's gone now. Pat, um, God bless his soul. But um, she respect the game and everything, but that wasn't a path that she chose to take or anything. And I always hid it from her too, you know? Mm. Always kept her in boarding schools and private schools and she always had the best of everything. So she never knew that you were doing this? Oh, for a minute, but then, after, then she found out, you know, <laughs> kids are smart and they could tell. And yes, she knew what it was, but she wouldn't trip in because you know, I was around, you know, players and pimps and, you know, dope dealers and boosters and, you know, we were around that type of people, you know what I'm saying? But we were living the good life. It wasn't like we was living in the gutter. We lived in the best condos and had the nicest cars and, you know, everything. So she know that, you know, it was some something jumping off, but, you know, kids stay in, you know, they and children stay in children's place. So what what what, what keeps you in... in in this lifestyle, is it is it the, that the money is 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 good and fast? Is it that? Uh... Oh, I'm retired from that. You know, I'm retired from that. I have been a madam. You know, have my own stable, but not even like I'm a pimp or something like that. I just charge service fees for me accommodating a girl with a client. Mm -hmm. So I would never put that, you know, on me a pimp or anything like that. But I can say a madam, mm -hmm. you know. But you know, getting my service fees and all that. But, um, but for a chip see how there's a difference how, how she's even saying don't call me a pimp I'm a madam words matter there's a connotation that is associated with these words just like I don't see myself as a life coach you know um, but like destiny does it's like we see ourselves differently so like I don't see myself as a life coach but like destiny does but then when I think of a life coach I think of somebody who's like let me help you through your problems to get from point A to point B which I can't guarantee because I don't have a business like that. So that's what I think of a life coach as. But then Destiny sees me as a life coach. She sees herself as a madam, but not as a pimp. But some people would see her as a pimp. I think it matters how she sees herself. I think it's important that she doesn't see herself as a pimp. I think it matters that she doesn't see herself as a pimp because I think I would agree with her that there is a difference between a madam and a pimp, though they kind of work similarly typical girl that or, or guy that stays in this game for a long time is it like an addictive lifestyle that just it's very addictive the game be calling your name it'd be like martina martina but you just know have to know when to fold them you know when when it's that time you know i left out the game gracefully i didn't want to be one of those people that's just still out there still grinding you know but you saved but, money oh yeah absolutely but I don't knock the game. If I see somebody mm. doing what I used to do or whatever, I don't knock nobody or judge nobody, you know, because I ate and I lived off this money. For um, Slushy says when describing her daughter and her lifestyle, she's the same exact same living like a king energy as the other guy. She does. Do you guys feel a difference, though? I see a difference. She she gave her daughter a life that was so far from the game that I would argue like she almost did it on purpose. Like if it wasn't such a bad thing, why did she hide it to some extent? Like I've been debating when to tell my kids I'm on OnlyFans and stuff like that. And I think like once high school starts, I want my kids to be super aware of the world and every detail around it. I want them to be just so aware of how the world works, to understand sex work, to understand like um, 
anything anything about this. Like I want my kids to be so fucking self-aware um, to the best of my ability and to the extent they want to be. So I think I don't want to be ashamed. I'm not ashamed of being naked online. I do think there's a time for kids to learn these things so they can process them outside of the lens of like child brain. And at the same time, a 15 year old, 14 year old, still a child, they're old enough to now grasp, start grasping real concepts about the world, right? So I feel like it's interesting that she sent her kid to boarding school and that she didn't tell her daughter about it and that eventually her daughter knew and she's chilling, but that she doesn't do it anymore, but she's a madam. Like, is the goal to always be the top? Like, is the goal to be the madam? Is the goal to be the pimp? Why? Is it because it sucks being one of the workers? Is that always how it is? I kind of like the idea that it wouldn't be horrible being a worker with the right kind of working conditions and therefore any job. I think any job with a good working condition is probably a great job, right? I think we all just hate our jobs because of the working conditions. So I think we even traditionally hate sex work because of the working conditions. But it's not really the sex work part of it that bothers me. I have no problem with people being managers, people being madams or pimps, if that's the way you want to phrase it. I just, I have an issue as a Britney because I'm so fiercely about independence to the best of your ability. And a madam and a pimp is like saying I need a boss. But I'm, you know, I run my own business. So like, even my dad would say, Brittany, you can't work where you have to take orders from people. I barely handle the rules of YouTube's TOS, let alone like actually having like a boss. Like I'm not this person. But I could see how this would benefit a lot of people. My allergies, oh my God. Yeah, I'm not... I'm not upset with like a good business. A good business is a good business. For years. And it's good money. Ain't nothing like no whole money. Whole money is for show money. And drugs were a part of your life? No. Marijuana, some Hennessy, and keep it moving. Hmm. So how do you define success? You, you think Great question. the money you make is enough to satisfy you and keep you happy or? No, you always want more. You don't, ne it's never enough money. It's never enough money. Like I'm retired, but I tell you the truth right now. If I walked out in that lobby and it was a rich man, a white man, not trying to be funny, was about to give me some money, baby, I will pull it over for a band. And I'll be so quick before you can wink your eye because I got that sunshine. Never had a problem satisfying a client. I believe you. But um, never say what you never would never would do. Like I said, if I went outside in that lobby right now and somebody offered me the right amount of money, like I said, I'm pulling it over, man. <laughs> I'm getting to it. And then, and okay. Yeah. So if the goal is money, okay, so like this is very, I love, I love money games. Money games are so interesting. I am really bad at them because I'm not motivated enough by money. Like I'm not like her. If, girl, I'm going to tell you this right now. Like I am amazed at how good I am at choosing myself and my laziness. But if I'm like, if I go to the lobby and someone's like, hey, I'll give you 10 grand to suck my dick. I'm like, no. If they're like, I'll give you 100 grand. And I just like look at them and I just don't like them. I'm like, no, I'll just make that money a different way. Versus like, I, cause I don't like doing things I don't want to do. I hate it. I'm such a brat. I know. Brittany Simon, I see that in the chat. It's funny. I am a brat. So I won't. Like I actually, who said this to me recently? Oh yeah. Um, be open to money. Like be open to people giving you money. And I was like, nah. Like I, cause I know money is also like a way people own you. I'm like, nah, I'm good. But like, that's the thing is like, I'm not saying that I, I'm not saying that I would never have sex for $100,000. I'm saying that I probably won't if I'm literally just not in the mood. Because in my head, I come from such like a hustle background that I'm like, I could just make $100,000. I don't know how, but I'll just figure it out. Like I would rather make less money and do what I want every day than to do something I don't want to do to make the money. So I like her attitude that she is like, open to making money every day to like hour of the day. I love that. I don't see a problem with this. I do not have her dedication to money, but I appreciate hers because I don't have it. Like I literally just don't like I have. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Look at me on Friday. I totally didn't do a live show 
because I was like, I'm in pain. Like I'm crying on my bed and being a pity party of a Britney because like I'm in so much pain. And like, I just was like, no, I'm not gonna. Or even like Sneeko hit me up yesterday to stream and I was like, nah. And he was like, why? And I was like, because I'm literally sick. I have calls. I'm so fucking tired. No. I will give up opportunities to collab and stuff because I will choose myself. But that's also a, that's like a, a rule I gave myself when I came back to YouTube was that like, we were going to choose me this time. We were going to choose, not that I didn't do that every time really, but like I'm going to choose my me even harder this time, even more so. Because I just know that for me, I make good money already. And as long as I can pay my bills, like, I don't mind being middle class. <laughs> I'd rather be middle class and actually get to, like, take a nap in the middle of the day than be upper middle class and never come home to my kids. So, again, it's like, I don't know. Like, I couldn't, yeah. It's, again, no judgment, literally. I'm just saying that we all have different motivators. And I I'm kind of respect this woman's motivation. Uh, seven with the super chat. Hi, seven. PSA break. Here's two peak pain. Submitting the, submitting the hill to us and less and less. Pain Z. Pro tip. Don't ever get an infection on your tongue. Noted. Thank you for letting me know that. And there's something about this life, the, the, the attraction from, from men, the fact that they're willing to give you a lot of money for what you do. Yeah. That builds, kinda, it, builds, it builds your self-esteem. It's kind of, yes, yeah, a vanity type of thing, too. It makes you confident. I wouldn't say conceited, confident, like I still got it, you know? Like when young boys try to get at me, like I'm definitely not, not like not a cougar. I would never be a cougar. I'm more, girl. more of a fox, you know? If fox is still a cougar, girl. Like actually I'm in my 30s now and um, and um, I don't mind it. Like when young guys hit on me, they're like, you're like an older woman who has experience. I'm like, yes, I am. <laughs> I feel like I earned that right to be like a girl who's like old enough not to be a young girl, but a girl that like could teach a boy a few tricks. Like, yeah, I fuck, I fuck with that energy. I actually like being like, though, I like that dynamic, that power dynamic of like, ooh, is this something you've never done before? Let me help you learn that for the first time. Yeah, I'm into that energy. But it does make you the older person. And so some women don't want to be older. But I think um, I think it's hot. <laughs> Anything, they're going to get some wisdom from me. And I'm a brother them up, or nephew them up real quick. I don't I don't play those kind of games, you know. But, the, but for everything that's got an upside, there's a downside to it. What, 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 what are the rough sides of this lifestyle? Getting robbed, going crazy. Um, get depressed? Pardon me? You get depressed? Get depressed. Um, the only time I get depressed about anything is poverty. I'm much of a, I'm, I'm, I'm a very happy person all the time. I believe her. I'm scared of poverty. Poverty. Yeah, I don't want to be broke. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. This is, I like her. I fuck with her. I want to talk to her. She should be friends with me. Okay, wait, I... Yeah, okay. I'm not afraid of, uh, afraid of poverty because I'm not afraid of losing all my money. I've done it so many times and I've made the money back. So I, I'm so fucking confident. That's funny. One of my callers asked me that. She makes like a lot of money. And she was like, how are you so comfortable making so little? And I was like, ah, I've lost my money enough. I could always make more. Also, I don't have that much to lose. Like I don't have millions in the bank that I could lose, right? It's like thousands. But it's not, you know, it's not like a lot. Like I made it. If I can make it, I can make it again, Right. So I'm not afraid of that, but I'm afraid of being out of control of my in my life. So she will give up a little bit of control to have the money and not be poor. Fair. Poverty in particular. Fair. I would rather have zero dollars in my account than do anything I don't want to do. And when I say I don't want to do it, I mean it feels like borderline rape. Like it feels like, nope, this is like, nope, which is also a part of my bubble because I come from a very... I come from a very hardcore bubble of like die for your beliefs, like have conviction and die for your beliefs. So I think that it's ingrained in me to be okay losing everything for something that means something to me. I think that's why I'm so like loyal when I'm loyal because I'm like it's it means something to me. But again, if I grew up in a different bubble, maybe this wouldn't mean the same thing to me. Maybe I would be afraid of being poor. Like, you know what I mean? And again, I grew up with hand-me-downs. We had no name brand stuff. We had 10 kids and one income. My dad didn't make more than six figures. You know, it was always six figures, like 100000 a year. After some time, of course, like years into the business actually making money. And then some years he didn't make money. 
Um, but I'm not afraid. My parents come from extreme poverty, like my mom's side especially. But we don't fear not having money because we have family. Like I come from such a privileged background because I have like family. Like what do you need money for when you have family, right? Like that's kind of like the bubble I come from. Like it's okay. We'll hustle together. Like three of my brothers live with me. I'm happy to pay their rent for some time while they get a hold of their debts. I'm, a, I'm okay to help out when they need it. I'm, they are okay to help me out when I need it. Like we we have that now because we're all adults and we can work and we can – it's a burden. It's hard, but it's not the worst. So that makes sense that our bubbles would inform us so differently. But yeah, I feel like who cares if you have money when you have family until like – obviously you need money. But like when you have – again, it's kind of like I'm not afraid of needing a kidney transplant even though I am because I have like nine siblings and one of them is going to give me a kidney. <laughs> like You know what I mean? But I also like – we maintain those relationships – we're, we're loyal, we love each other, we're trying to build like symbiotic relationships where no one ever feels like they're being taken advantage of. Um, but money is nice though. Money is great. Money is so needed. Like you need money. I just like, I'm not afraid of not having it. I'm afraid of not being able to make it back. So I'm afraid of someone taking away my right to make money, my ability to make, I'm afraid of somebody shutting down OnlyFans or being anti-sex work. I'm afraid of someone being anti-me on YouTube. I'm afraid of getting my Patreon taken down because that stops me from making money. I'm afraid of being stopped from making money. I'm not afraid of losing my money. I can always make it back. But I will be always afraid. Um, I will always be afraid of someone trying to stop me from making money, which is why I'm anti-firing, which is why, like, I'm very particular about, you know, um, like, firing for, like, being gay or something like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Okay, I got to pee really fucking bad. So I'll just, like, I'm going to be right back. And help me understand Edu says you can make money out of sex work well obviously that too um <sighs> if I fell in love with you Oh, Brooke says, I just found out I'm pregnant with a baby and I can't keep, I don't know what I'm going to do. Oof, that's a hard one, girly. You'll know what to do. Meditate, listen to your gut, and know that any path you choose is probably okay. You'll be fine. I know it's really hard. That is really difficult. Honestly, if I got pregnant right now, it would fucking wreck all my plans. <gasps> Wait, I lost my plasticky thing. <gasps> no! No! No, come back. I lost my thing that goes on my earphone. That's so annoying. Is it in my hair? No, I don't know where it is. Um, yeah, if I got pregnant right now, it would literally wreck all my plans. Like, what do you think the most sympathy? misunderstood thing is about this lifestyle? You know, for, for people outside of it, it seems like a very cold... People judge it and think like, Ow, oh, we're fuck, some I cool lost. people. We do this. Discord says, um, like, what do you do if you've grown up in an extreme poverty such that even if you have a family, they are powerless to help and support you when you need it? You learn to make your own way. Rely on yourself. Love matters less. Money matters more. Yeah. So, again, uh, I think when we're looking at pimp culture, I want to ask the questions of, like, that's what people do with sex work. Like, would you do sex work if you had to? And it's like, yeah. No, wait, if you didn't have to. And it's like, yeah, I would. I would do my version of sex work, which is like only fans and stuff, because I just like taking naked photos and being naked on camera. I would do that, and I have done that even when I didn't get paid for it. So I know I do it because I just love it. But if you do things because you don't love it, then it's just a job and it's just something you do. It's not like a lifestyle you should promote. So again, there's a difference between promoting a lifestyle that you're like, this is actually going to bring you joy. If you've never done this before, you should start doing it. And then being somebody who's like, Hey, if you have to do this for a survival situation, here's something I recommend. When people ask me if they should work for Amazon, I'm like, hustle for two years and work for them if you want, but then get out because it's not a lifestyle choice you want for 50 years, you know, depending on where you are in Amazon. So again, I think depending on your bubble, if you're doing something for survival, it's a different conversation than if you're doing something because it's a good lifestyle. It, like if literally, if my like daughter comes to me or son and goes, hey mom, 
I want to do sex work. Which form of sex work is the best? I'm like, well, what's your goal? And if their goal is independence and making money, well, you want to choose a route that's going to give you the most independence and the most money. You don't want to choose a route that's like, hey, you like come from a mom who's already established in sex work and I'm going to go walk the streets and find a pimp. Like, why would you find a pimp when you could just like use the model your mother did and keep 90% of your income and then pay your tax and do it proper on paper? Like, why would you run the risk of pimping or like escorting or any of those things? Though escorting is different too because I don't mean just like street walking. I mean like if my kid wanted to do a high-end escorting, like I would send them to a place that gave them legal high-end escorting options because that is maybe what I'll have established and ready for them to have as an option versus if I was in a survival situation, maybe we wouldn't have those options. You know what I'm saying? So everything you do is based off your bubble, your circumstance, and what tools you have at your disposal. Notice that both the pimp and the hoe said the same things. Both the man and the woman said the same thing. They are smarter and more equipped and they feel like they have a lot of knowledge. What if I told them you have brushed the tip of the iceberg of knowledge? Even what I know compared to what they know would probably blow their mind compared to like what someone else knows versus what I know would blow both of our minds. I think like that's what's so crazy is that in every bubble, there's a specific kind of knowledge that is the most knowledge, right? And so I think that they're in bubbles where they feel like they've reached the pinnacle of like lots of knowledge. They are the top of their game. And I think that's very interesting because again, could I take them into someone else's game and see how they landed? They'd probably be at the bottom. We're all the bottom of someone's game. So then the question is, which one are you playing in your life? And are you, where are you in it? Because it's all going to be different. And it's not bad. If you're in the real estate game, great. Are you in the house flipping game? Are you in the like landlord game? Are you in the, it's all different, right? A very cold. People judge it and think like, oh, we're some cruel people. We do this, we do that. But like in the Bible, have you ever heard of Rahab when she hid Joshua and Caleb and uh, right before they were going to take over Jericho? And the, and the soldiers came there and they were like, I, I know that somebody been over here trying to, you know, peep out our, you know, scene and stuff like that. She was like, yeah, they were here and they got some coochie, but they went that way when they really went that way. And God blessed her, you know. So like I'm, I'm saying that to say this, Hohen been going on for a long time and it's never going to stop. Right. That is true. You know, and Rahab was blessed by God and... She is one of the people in the Bible that has so much faith in God that he loved her so much. And she was Boaz's mother. We love so, Boaz. He's hot as hell. Oh, God took her away from that game and he made, made her a virtue woman. <laughs> and she married somebody in the Hebrew army. So is there... See, see how all the stories, though, is like they got out of hoeing? So again, no one... Okay. So again, is it the hoeing that God loves or is it the person you are even if you're a hoe? Do you get what I'm saying? Like, do you get what I'm saying? It's like there have been escorts and prostitutes and women who sleep with men throughout the Bible, throughout history. And these women are amazing. But I'm saying within the bubble, okay, yes. But what if you weren't in that bubble? Then it wouldn't be that way, right? So all of our life only matters in context to also the reality we're involving ourselves in, the bubble. So that, that's, what, that's what I find fascinating. So I think I have a, like a, an energy of like judgment towards the, these choices because again, I'm still not hearing that this is where people want to end up permanently. I hear it's where they want to be until they're not there anymore to some extent or they do it lightly because money, because money. That's, that's fine, but what if your goal is in money? Does pimping help? Like, does it bring you joy? So again, it's not really like what we're doing. Like in my, like I would love to run like a fucking brothel. Like fuck yeah, that'd be so dope, bro. Dances, celebrations, healthy customers, STI checkups, happy girls, happy boys, happy days. Like I think it'd be so fun. I know a lot of people that work in brothels. They're awesome. I like the way they do their stuff. It's like a job. It's normal. I love all of that. Like, I love all of that energy. Different kinds of people have different relationships, though. Like, the women I know who work brothels, they do have women that are, like, their madams, but they would never let a man hit them, and they would never tolerate, like, a bad customer energy from their customers. They'll tolerate rudeness to an extent, but, like, hitting the women, absolutely not, right? So I think that's the issue is that 
I don't mind pimping and hoeing if it means good business. But if you're out here hitting people and raping people, drowning people, I'm going to have an issue. And the issue isn't with the pimping. It's with the extra spice on top that I got the issue with. Sure. But also in terms of business, in the same way that I wouldn't want my sibling or like my spouse to be in the military because I wouldn't want to be without them for eight months out of the year. I also wouldn't want to date a stripper because I don't like people who work nights. I also wouldn't date a person who stuffed shelves at Kroger at night because like the details of that job are annoying for my life, right? So again, I can be ugh about pimping in the same way that I'm ugh about people who work nights. Because I think like, ugh, if you work nights, like how stressful. And everyone I know who works nights is stressed except for the people who really love it. It's a very stressful time to work. When everyone's asleep, so annoying, so annoying, so annoying. But like people do it. Is pimping your passion? We like a passionate pimp. Passionate pimping. We need that on merch. Does it wear on you after a while knowing that every guy, every other girl, every cop, every pimp, every everyone is kind of looking out for themselves? It's a doggy dog world. Eat or be eight. In that bubble. You know. Well, in every bubble. I don't bubble, have but thin skin. Difference. Like somebody who has thin skin, they couldn't take it. It's not for everybody. I agree, girl. Have you seen girls that just couldn't handle it? I see men that can't handle it. Amen, girl. Amen. You got to have that je ne sais quoi. So tell me, when she says you can't handle it, does that make you want to automatically be a person who can handle it? Because that's like a way people do it to cope. Like, you couldn't handle this. But the truth is, is like, you couldn't handle being a YouTuber if you're not a YouTuber. Like, the reason people don't become YouTubers is because ultimately you either don't want to or you can't handle it. Because it's fucking annoying and it's a lot of stress, right? It's the easiest, most stressful job in the world. Same with, like, hoeing or pimping or sex work or anything. I think the people that, like, want to make it illegal are always going to be the problem because they're projecting their weirdness onto it. Like, I'm pro-sex work because I'm pro-bodily agency autonomy 100%, right? So I like her energy a lot. But she's right. Like, it's not easy. So, like, to do it, you have to be someone who can handle it. You know? And that's what I have. Like I said, it's a lot of extraordinary people that's in this game. You were called a... Ooh, Discord says, I think some people don't value joy the same as you do, correct? I think these people value money over joy. They are following their values. Their values are just different than your valid, than your value of follow your joy. 100% what I'm saying. Yes. So you guys are getting that that's what I'm saying, right? Like you're all understanding that I, Brittany, can have an issue with this energy in this bubble without actually caring what they're doing. Like I don't even want them to stop what they're doing. I don't give a fuck what they do. And I do believe they are following their joy. Do I think it is... Well, I do think they're following their happiness, which she said she wants to be happy. And she might not be following her joy, which might not matter to her. But I think that's what everyone is trying to, like, push on each other is, like, you should be happy the way I'm happy. But, like, I don't think that's real. I think everyone's happy differently. If she's happy, great. Right? Again, I think there are different ways to experience these things. Like, are you happiest in this bubble? Or are you happiest even past the bubble? which it doesn't matter which one you choose, right? So I just want to make sure that you guys are hearing that for me, I don't care what people do. I have preferences in the same way that I don't eat bananas and I hate bananas. I I feel the same way about lifestyle choices. This is not what I would do, but go off, right? It's like gay judging, but just gay judging because like, I don't really care. The very first time you did this for money? I can remember the first day. It was June 1st, <laughs> 1985. And I went to Frisco, and I came up on $500. And back in the day, that's like $1,000, $1,500. I thought it was hot shit. And I was like hanging with a group of little white girls, Italian girls, you know, so I was getting really money. I was like the black girl in the group. So I really benefited off being around those white girls. You know, if you can't beat them, join them. What was the best time of your life? The best time of my life Oh, I have so many great times. I remember like DC when uh, Kenny, man, we was getting so much money. That's when Mayor and Barry was the mayor when he got caught with the crack at that time. The police was cricket. Everybody was cricket. All they wanted was their hands oiled. And that was one of the funnest times in my life. I used to have tricks lined up. Like I would never get in a car. Please 
please note in this bubble how the criminals and the police have a relationship because they're all criminals. With them, I would have the station wagon and they would look for me. My name was Tiffany back then. They'd be like, we want Tiffany, we want Tiffany. And I had blonde hair back then. And um, that was one of the funnest times of my life. I just loved home and I was just such a happy hooker. And then, you know, having such a good pimp like Kenny Red really made you happy because he was a fun pimp. Like, you know, we used to go out to dinner. He used to take us all out. We used to go to the player's ball. He would have big birthday parties. And we'd be like, whoever's getting the most money. And it was like a little competition thing with my wife-in-laws. But I know why I don't like this bubble. You have to be a team player. And I hate being a team player. It's weird, it's like independent, but it's weirdly like a team player. Like he took us all out, meaning he took the girls out, I assume. Like I, yeah, I just, I'm not a team player. I don't wanna, f I actually, why I love YouTube is like, Sneeko isn't relying on me. I'm not relying on Sneeko, right? Like if Sneeko and I can't collab today, cause like I'm running out of spoons, guys, I'm leaving in like an hour. But like, I'm tired, I have to record the podcast, I have to edit the podcast, I have wait, you know what I mean? I don't, it's not going to matter. He's not dependent on me. I'm not dependent on him. But when we collab, it's like nice, a little boost. People sign up for my OnlyFans. People join. Like, it's nice. Vice versa. I know some people from my audience bought his like creative kit, which is really, or creator kit, which is cool. So like we, you know, it's a good networking thing if we want to do it that way. But I am so relieved that like I am not, he is not relying on me and I'm not relying on him for money. Like I'm so relieved. So I think maybe a big part of my independence factor is too, is like, I don't want to stop people from living their lives. It's so hard to go into business as someone because you're basically saying, are you going to sacrifice your life to go f towards this dream that takes two of us? It's very difficult. And I think that's why the relationship between the pimp and the girls is maybe like almost like healthy because they rely on each other. Or maybe pimps protecting other pimps too. If one gets busted, then they could all get busted. It's like one of those things. I, yeah, I think I'm really grateful that I, my income isn't, dictated on whether or not someone else shows up to work like I'm pretty happy about that I mean obviously Google has to show up to work and YouTube has to run but that's gonna happen because there's too much money in it not to you know what I'm saying I would want myself as my own pimp exactly <laughs> I feel like I pimp myself now how do you know that that a bubble is right for wait Amansur says how do I know that a bubble is right for me while dealing with borderline you got a trial and error you got a trial and error keep a journal keep notes of your moods keep note of what things positively impact you or don't impact you um I'm a very big trial and error person like I try it if it doesn't work try something else I'm a big it's just elimination by you know but it was not bad you know it was like kind of healthy built your character you know and who's gonna get the rawest outfit but he made sure that we all were treated equal and um, one thing Kenny Red never did, like pimps do, they put all their holes together trying to save money and stuff like that. Not Kenny Red. Not Kenny Red. He have us all in different hotels. Ooh. You know? Like, he don't like all that. You know? Mm. And he would just be bouncing around from different cities. I may be in Hawaii. I may have a wife in law in Vegas. Let's go. And I might have a wife in law in Miami, a wife in law in California. You know, Kenny Red had it, like his first string, his second string, and then he had the third string, which was the Dookie booties. But, you know, he still made them feel good about home. They, they, weren't, they weren't really no lookers, you know. But I was also, you know, I was all, uh, definitely on the first string. I was a starter. But um, I never warmed the bench, <laughs> just to let you know that. What, what, was, what was the worst time of your life? Your the, worst, the worst time in my life was, um, thank God I never got raped or none of that stuff like that, because oh, I'm a riot God. myself. I said, thank, good for you, girly. See how the hierarchy exists everywhere? She's literally like, she like, see how there's like a hierarchy? Like, oh, I wasn't one of those ones. I was one of these ones. Like no matter how you play the game, you always wanna be the good one, but then who's the bad ones? And what does that mean? Does that mean like the dookie booties are, <laughs> are not what you wanna be? So would, you, would she say, oh, you don't wanna be them. If you do pimping or hoeing, you don't wanna be that girl. You wanna be this girl, right? Then we go to her and go, you don't wanna be this girl. You wanna be this girl. There's always a better, there's always a top of a top of a top of a top, right? Like, this is what's so interesting. Hmm. To have a switchblade in my bra, a mace here. Like, I'm really pretty, but I'm dangerous. 
hella dangerous, and I know how to throw these paws. Bam, bam, bam. You know, but anyway, back to the lecture at hand. The most depressed time of my life, or the worst time of my life, was when I was on the whole stroll and I got really sick and I was scared for my life and I got rushed to a Queens of Angels Hospital and um, I was having an optopic pregnancy. No! Could you imagine that? Oof. Out on the whole stroll in Hollywood. But I'm hurting all day and I had an optopic pregnancy. And then I um, went to the hospital, they did surgery on me. This stupid doctor left surgical sponges in my stomach. And before, and they let me out the hospital a week later. That happens. And then I just was. Girl, if I had a story for every woman I knew that had some story about how some doctor left something inside of her, girl. Really sick. And then I had to go back to the hospital and I almost died. So that was one of the really scariest times in my life. I don't really Ooh. have any scary times. Like I was kidnapped by no tricks, thank God, you know. I had a trick one time, pull a gun on me, and I was like, oh God, uh, like I was scared. And all of a sudden I snatched it out of his hand and I pulled it on him. I was like, you gonna hurt somebody with this gun. And I opened up the door, I was like, get out, get out. And I just pulled a gun on him. You know, I had some close calls, you know. And um, I had a really, really crazy experience. I had shut the whole whole show down in Van Bruin in Phoenix. Um, it was a rookie police. He um, tried to arrest me, and he went in the hotel to go get a room, and I looked in the glove compartment and seen his badge and his gun. I took it all, and I hid it in the garbage outside the hotel, and then he got in the car, and then we pulled over, and he tried to, like, block me in, but I jumped out the window before he can get me. Then he looked in his uh, glove compartment, and his shit was gone. And do you know they shut the whole, whole stroll down? Everybody was Ooh. mad at me. But I kept it and um, got on a uh, bus and went back to another city and stuff. But they wind up getting it like two years later. I'm not going to tell you how because I don't want to incriminate myself. But that was a crazy experience, you know, and I know he got demoted. This is what I'm saying. We all know this is like a bubble that like a lot of people are not going to have this life story. They're not even going to have an opportunity to get arrested by a cop and steal his gun or put it somewhere. I am totally okay with what she did. I'm not about to talk shit on a woman who's put in a compromising situation, right? But like, that is interesting. That is something that like, see, I grew up in a bubble where like a lot of opportunities to go against a cop was available to you. Uh, wasn't quite like this though. But I fuck with her attitude because you can tell she's telling a story about a real life. It wasn't like she had different options and she chose these options. So that's the question. If you have different options, would you choose this life? And again, it's different choosing it as a high-end escort who chooses and picks her customers and someone who like needs a pimp, lives on the street, and has the run the risk of like guns being pulled on them, which all escorts do. All sex workers have the – like every person, even like – I mean, if you live in the country, you might have that happen in a Walmart parking lot because y'all are fighting. So, like, it depends on what bubble you're in. But some things are just more common than others. Like, some things are just like, oh, yeah, that happens in our bubble all the time. And while other people are like, oh, that doesn't, like, that's not normal. This is very interesting to me. But I like her energy. Fuck yeah. But um, for the most part, I'm a happy hooker. And Kenny Red Pimpin is good. And he was always good to all of his hookers. And uh, we always had nice cars. We always had nice places, you know, and... Uh, Did you ever look back at, <coughs> at your situation, at your life, and just go, man, this is so nuts, this is so crazy? It's so crazy. Sometimes I, um, I regret not taking um, um, opportunities for, like, you know, music producers and, uh, you know, movie producers, being in Hollywood and stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm a very attractive lady, and I have a very witty personality. Why does everyone think they're hot? Am I the only one that's like, yeah, most people are just like neutral. I think most people are just kind of like people and only truly hot people are hot. So like, I know I'm cute and I know like I'm, but like some of these girls, the way even like Lab was like growing up very beautiful and I was like, okay, like no one's, okay, not a lot of people are actually very, like, okay. Like, I just feel like, I just feel like people are look like people and they're only hot if you're into what they look like, but they're not hot otherwise. 
Like, I feel like you could give me a 10 and I'll point out all the flaws in them, but they're still like 10s because, well, if they didn't get plastic surgeries, if you got plastic surgery, you can't count. I do, I had this conversation with a caller the other day and I do kind of think like, if you're beautiful, you have to be naturally beautiful. So you can't have like dot, like you can't have wigs and stuff. It's cheating. Like if you're using eyelashes, and it's cheating. Like you're either beautiful or you're not beautiful, but you kind of have to be like beautiful, but then beautiful is subjective to the like, the person who's viewing, so like who I find beautiful might not be who you find beautiful. I don't know. I just have an issue with how people see themselves, I think. But also like, does calling yourself hot make you less hot? I think when you call yourself hot, it makes people go, oh, let me look at you now. Or if you call yourself ugly, it makes them go, oh, let me look at you now. So I, I think like, what does hot mean to Brittany? I think you're hot because you feel hot. I think hot is a feeling. I think you're hot if you feel hot. Um, makeup's cheating too. AO says, what about makeup? Makeup's cheating too. I think like if you're actually like a genetically beautiful person, like you would be a genetically beautiful person. But I think none of us are. And I think in, even if some of us are, and I do think some of us might be, they would be like the anomalies in the evolutionary like pool, right? But generally speaking, I... I think most of us are just average. Most of us just look like a people. Like most of us just look like the animal that we are. Like you know how some dogs are prettier than other dogs of the same breed? It's like, yeah, I know a husky is a beautiful dog, right? I know a chihuahua is a less beautiful dog. But that's because they're like aesthetically pleasing huskies. Like I look at Nimbus sometimes and I'm like, fuck, you're so beautiful. I look ugly next to Nimbus. I look ugly next to the dog. Because like, it's just like, what? So I just feel like, I don't know. I don't, I think, it, I don't know. I have a really weird relationship with like what is hot or what is like super attractive because then guys will show me pictures of women that are like tens to them. And I'm like, yeah, but they all have plastic surgery. It doesn't count if you have plastic surgery because like, okay, anyone could look any way if a doctor came and like morphed you into looking that way. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Um, yeah, she is hot if she feels hot. But again, I just think it's interesting because I feel like when I play the game, I try to be very aware of like what I look like so I can gauge my opportunities based off of like how much can I use pretty privilege to my advantage, which for someone like me is only so much advantage, right? But again, if you over inflate what you look like, you're going to wonder why things aren't working out to the extent they could. But then some people, so again, it's, I have no problem with people thinking they're tens, but that's why Sneeko and I laugh when he does these interviews with people and all these girls are like, I'm a 10. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> sit down there, sister. It's like, okay, you have to know what you look like to actually know what you look like. But then maybe not like gay people. I'm thinking of drag queens who are so good with their chemistry that it doesn't actually matter what they look like. What matters is what they make you feel like they look like. Like I was watching Nikki's new music video with my brother and he thinks she's gross. She, he hates girls like Nikki. I think Nikki's hot. But I don't think Nikki is making that video for men. I don't think most men I know would think Nikki was hot. Most men I know would not find Nikki attractive because Nikki is like obnoxiously boss girl and she's like not the kind of woman that men would want to be with traditionally. Not because she's like not wholesome or whatever. It's because her personality is like she would have to date a certain kind of guy. But generally speaking, I don't know if Nikki's what guys find attractive. But Nikki's what I find attractive. Nikki's what I find most queer women find attractive. I think Nikki makes music for women. I think Nikki is, her version of hot is women hot. Nikki Minaj is women hot. I don't think she's male hot. But I could be wrong. Like, I could be wrong. But generally speaking, it's like, uh, you know what I mean? Um, generally speaking, we're all a little ratchet. Thanks for the reminder. I mean, kind of. Maybe. Like, we're all kind of, like, gross in some ways, I think. Um, a lot of men I know love the way Nikki looks. Nikki is hot sometimes. That latest video was hot. Interesting. Um, I love Nikki. I love her so much, though. Black men in particular love her. Yeah, so generally speaking, right? Like in, right? Like generally speaking, you do black men make the majority of the world up? 
So like generally speaking, men in general, who's the type of girl they would generally go for? But then if Melina is truly a Miami four, then it has to be with bubbles, which still put, proves my point. Like certain people are just like not hot to certain people. Like Melina is not hot to certain people. Melina isn't perfect to me. Like I could point out ways that like Melina is a 10 and then Melina is not a 10, right? Because if you have actual preferences for specific body parts being bigger than others, you wouldn't say someone's a 10, right? So then the 10 becomes subjective. I think you could say like, like, you know what I mean? Also, okay. Monster, you keep repeating the same question. And I mean this in the nicest way. My chat does not run like other YouTube chats. You don't have to repeat the same question. I've been seeing it. I don't want to answer it because I've answered this question a thousand fucking times. You don't have to keep posting it in the chat. It says, how much do you value being genuine? I'm fucking not answering that question because I answer it all the fucking time. And I don't like repeat answering a lot of things when I know I'm short on time. But I'm not like other YouTubers where you have to repeat your question for me to see it. The chat is moving slow. You don't have to do it. In my bubble, that's rude. In your bubble, that's probably normal because I've seen Destiny's chat. I understand you guys have to repeat questions to get seen. Don't do that on my chat. I will have my mods ban you for annoying me because it's annoying to me. Um, ooh, Miss Alyssa says, I think you can create pretty privilege with enough confidence. Like you make yourself hot by projecting those beliefs about yourself. Yes, which is what I feel like happens with these girls. They just like say they're hot enough that people start to believe the narrative, but that doesn't make you hot. It just makes you able to sell the version that makes you think you are. Do you get what I'm saying? So I think that's fine, and I agree. I think uh, I see it in gay queer circles all the time. They project hotness, so people are like, they're hot, but it's their confidence that's hot. It's not really them. You know what I mean? Which is fine. Like, it's literally, I'm, again, I don't, none of this is made to judge people. I'm just saying, like, I'm so obsessed with knowing who I am that I, I really need, oh my god, Shadow Bee! So funny, Shadow B. Super funny. Love your energy, Shadow B. Shadow B says, Brittany, how much do you value being genuine? <laughs> Fucking hate you. And I used to get offered uh, so many different roles and do, do to do different things, themselves? but yes. I was just so sprung on Kenny Red Pimpin'. That was against the rules. So I never let nobody like trick me up or anything like that and try to tell me, you're too pretty for this, and I can help you do this, and I can help you do that. And I used to be like, Boy, bye. I got a pimp to pay. Ooh, Brittany, genuinely, how much do you value? Mm. Nice. Nice. And, I, you know, I just, my mind was just straight on paying my pimp. So I do, I do regret that in my life, oh. you know. You been in love before? Have I ever been in love? Um, it, with my daughter. Aw. With my daughter. And with Kenny Red. I used to love Kenny Red last year, Dirty Draws, and drink his dirty bath water. <laughs> yeah, for real. He's somebody that you could love. He got a heart bigger than Texas. Like, he had so much, so many bitches, and he treated us so good. And we all knew not to be jealous. Can't be jealous, or Kenny Red is going to be upset. I'm too much of a romantic for this bubble. Hi, Chance. How are you? I haven't seen you in so long. It's good to see your username. Um, I... Ooh, it's more of sex appeal than attractiveness. I agree with that. Sex appeal gets you far in life. For sure. I fuck with that, yeah. Um, I don't... See how they talk about love? It's one way. She's okay. Like, it's not... You could say it's two... Okay. You could say it's two ways. <clears throat> Again, I am not... You know what it is? I... It's a different kind of love. So this love is different than the love of a couple who's been together for 50 years and monogamous, right? It's different than the people who've been in a polyamorous relationship and been together for 30 plus years, right? It's a different kind of love. <clears throat> so that's the only thing that my brain, I don't value this kind of love. Oh, that's what it is too. Because I, Brittany, don't value this kind of love. It's hard for me to be happy for them. So I actually do. This is one of my, like, one of my personality defects is like if I don't, like really approve or value other people's kind of choices it's it's like I can't pretend to be happy for your choices but I can be happy you're happy so if my friends are doing things that like I don't fucking like like I don't fucking like that shit you know what I mean 
Like, I have friends that, like, you know, they're in, like, cheating relationships. I don't fuck with that shit. I think it's fucking deplorable and degenerate. But at the same time, like, if they're happy and they're truly happy, then, like, I'm happy they're happy. But I'm not happy with their choices. But I just don't, like, that's the one thing that might be, hold on, my doctor's calling. Hi. Okay, sorry. She's going to call me back, too. Um, this girl trying to help me out, girls. I have not kissed anybody in, like, three years. And my girl trying to get me laid next week. So, please, okay, just give me a second here. Well, two weeks from now. Well, either way, I am trying to get laid here, okay? And I am trying to make it magical. So, we are, yeah, we're trying to get the right birth controls because I have lupus. I have to be really careful about what birth control I'm on and, like, how I do things because it can cause blood clots. Um... So I gotta be careful, um, but they just approved me for a birth control, and I'm very excited. And um, she just gave me great fucking news. Oh, I'm so stoked! She just gave me great fucking news. Yes, I'm so stoked, bros. I'm so fucking stoked. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm just like, mm, I'm so excited. I'm just. Oh, I'm gonna never. I'm, this person is not gonna be able to walk for the rest of his life. I'm gonna just. I'm gonna. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay. She just gave me great fucking news. Oh! Such great news, bros. Such great news, bros. Okay. Do, do you respect the men that, that pick, you, uh, pick you up? Um, do I respect them? Hell no, nah, fuck them funky ass tricks. I'd be nice, you know what I'm saying, just to get my money. But when they be trying to, I'll be praying that they hurry up. I'll be like, you funky, dirty ass, funky ass trick. This the mouth you kiss your kids with? Hell no, I ain't got no respect for them. The fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I love her. Also, thank you guys for celebrating. I'm losing my virginity again. I feel like a virgin. I'm losing it again. I'm so excited. Like, I'm not even gonna pretend like I'm not fucking so excited. I'm fucking stoked. Shit, I'm so excited. <laughs> So much going on. That's why I'm taking off next week. <laughs> oh, Discord. Great news. Flaming Hot Cheetos are allowed in your sex life. Don't. I'll cry. I wish. I wish. I wish. But yeah, I'm very excited. Oh, I'm so stoked. He's going to be so happy. I can't wait to tell him. Because we literally thought the birth control wasn't going to work um, for a second. We were all like freaking out. And I just got great news. And I'm just like, I'm stoked, bro. <laughs> Brittany sounded like a high school boy that's just about to get some for the first time. <laughs> Literally what I feel like. Can I be real with you guys? It has been a really long time since I have wanted to have sex with somebody or wanted to even let someone touch me. And I'm just like, I'm so stoked. I'm so stoked. Fuck yes. Oh, I'm so happy. Fuck yes. <laughs> what do you wish was different about your life? Do you have any regrets? Um, I told you, me not taking the opportunities that I could have been just, like, totally rich. But I just feel like it was my destiny, you know, and um, That's girl's name. it was written. You know, this is what it is. You know, I'm Hustle Mom. That's who I am. I'm the whole fairy. I sprinkle Ooh. these little young bitches, you know what I'm saying? Wait, that has always been a dream of mine to be a hoe fairy. And let them know the game, because I didn't have nobody to give me the game like them. That's cool. Because I paved the way for them. What, what advice you, would you give to a young girl? Um, a young girl. Who's thinking of doing this? I'll tell her to stack her money up like Jenga. You know what I'm saying? Stack your money up, buy you some Bitcoins, you know. Um, just save your money, give it to Big Mama. You know what I'm saying? Stay away from drugs. Never, never, ever go without rubbers. I don't care what they say. I don't care if it was the priest saying that he don't even have sex. He's celebrating you the first one. Let's go. Don't never go without a rubber. And that's what I'm thank God. I ain't got no diseases. I'm, you know, I'm just sucker free. I'm so, I'm one of God's favorite. I know I'm one of God's favorites because I ain't never, I got my scruples still. My throat ain't been slashed. I never been took off, robbed, but I have been tried to get took off. You know, but it, it never succeeded. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. You know, it formed. You know, I had some Mexicans try to take me off at one time, and I just jumped in the passenger seat and just gouged their eyes out, and we just had a car accident. We ran into a, um, a car lot. And when the police came, they were like, you so lucky. They was like, they didn't kill five girls. I was like, they weren't about to drive me to my death. 
I was kicking and screaming. You ain't about to drive me to my death. We all going out. I'm going kamikaze on your ass. And, um, you know, that was a scary experience, too. But, you know, I walked away with no scratch. Maybe I lost a heel. But I didn't have, they didn't get my money. This woman is like the literal opposite of a victim. Like, you know how like the victim narrative would have been, like they could have played all these stories up so hard. One time I was driving and I was ran off the road and like, can you believe, like, you know what I'm saying? But she's just like, I won that. The, this is why I think she's respectable because she's she's just so owning her life. She's owning it. And she's really proud of herself because she 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 beat her life. And I think that's amazing. Like, I think that's what we can all strive for is to beat whatever our demons are, to like accomplish the game of whatever our demons are. It's like, it's like doing that. But you know, sometimes when you get to the top, you still feel empty. And when that happens, then you can start asking yourself a bigger question about what does it mean to be me? This is why I don't think introspection is necessarily like depending on how far you go down the rabbit hole, like you don't need to go that far down to be very successful, right? You can feel pretty happy without it. And I think that's fine. I don't think it's necessary. So we don't want to project those like goals onto people. So like, I think that's why I like her energy is like, this woman sounds like someone who's not going to make her problems my problems. I like her. They didn't get my money, you know, what, but. What's the most important lesson you've learned? The most the <sighs> lesson I learned, and I've seen other women do, I'm not saying from my perspective, a lesson that, okay, I'm just not gonna even talk about nobody else. The lesson that I've learned, a lesson that I've learned, drop your books, lose your lessons. Yeah, drop your books, lose your lessons. Can't be dropping your books, you can't be slipping. Like you got banana peels up under your feet, you know? You gotta be on your toes. You gotta look, you know, and watch every way and look ahead and be 10 steps ahead. You can't be slow, Joe. And uh, that's my advice. Yeah. All right. Martina, thank you so much for sharing your story. Yeah, interesting, interesting. Okay.